Um, he, there was a story, and I was there when Dr. Hiles told this story, Dr. Jack Hiles. The, they had just, just uh, built a Charles Weigel Music Center there on campus. And it was uh, during, a, during a conference or a revival meeting, a Bible conference or a revival meeting. Brother Hiles went over to see Brother Weigel, Charles Weigel, and he, there, he stayed in a room there in the Weigel Center, had his own little apartment room there in the Weigel Center. And he said he heard this racket. I mean, for you from, y'all know what a racket is, don't you? It's a noise. Heard this racket down the hall. And he said, what in the world's going on? And he got closer to Brother Weigel's room, and he heard, he just heard, it just got louder and louder and louder. And he said he, he, he didn't know what was going on, so he just opened the door, and he looked through the door, and Charles Weigel was jumping up and down on the bed, saying, no one never cared for me like Jesus. Now, he, he told that story, and I, that stuck with me. You have to know the cho- a story of Charles Weigel. He, he was faithful to the Lord despite a lot of adversity and heartaches, and he stayed true to the Lord till he died. And every time I hear that song or uh, played or sang, I think about that story Dr. Hiles told. Take your Bibles. If you would, go to the book of Psalm, Psalm 121. No one ever cared for me like Jesus. Psalm 121 The Bible says, I will lift up mine eyes into the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day or the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. No one ever cared for me like Jesus. No one has ever cared, no one will ever care for me like Jesus. And God's in control. I read that song and I think about looking um, to the hills from whence cometh my help. My help's in the Lord. My help cometh from the Lord which made heaven and earth. The Lord is all in all. We said earlier that He's everything we need. He is everything we need. He's there for salvation to anyone that will believe Him. The Bible said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. You come through Jesus Christ. Always the Bible says that. And you'll come through Christ or you won't go to heaven. You'll believe what Christ did for you is sufficient or you'll miss heaven. You'll believe who He is and what He's done is sufficient to satisfy God. All of my help comes from the Lord. Everything, my sustenance, everything I need. My strength, everything comes from the Lord. Thank God that Jesus Christ is in control. And no one ever cared for me like Jesus. Did you know, and I started thinking about, after I read the psalm, I started thinking about some areas where God was in control. And even when you're not trusting Him, He is still in control. Even when you're not trusting Him, He's still in control. We're going to go back to Psalm 121, but we're going to walk through the Scripture just a little bit. This Wednesday night, we're going to Genesis chapter 20. Genesis chapter 20. Go with me if you will. My God is in control. No one ever cared for me like the Lord Jesus. Genesis chapter number 20, I'm not going to read the entire chapters as we turn to them, but I think you know the story in Genesis chapter number 20. Um, he went into Gerar, and, or Gerar, however you want to pronounce it, Gerar, and he had told his wife Sarah um, to say that she was his sister. Now, that wasn't a complete lie. She was his father's daughter, but not the, I mean, um, yeah, the father's daughter, but not the daughter of, of Abraham's mother. Anyway, um, the Bible said in verse 2 that um, Abimelech, king of Gerar, sent and took Sarah. And then God came to Abimelech in a dream in verse 3, 
and said to him, Behold, thou art a dead man, but a dead man. For the woman which thou hast taken, uh, which thou hast taken, for she is a man's wife. Verse 9, Abimelech, well, actually, verse 7, uh, he was instructed in the dream to restore the man his wife, for he is a prophet. Said Abraham was a prophet, and he shall pray for thee, and thou shalt live. If thou restore her not, know that thou shalt surely die, thou and all that are thine. And Abimelech called Abraham in verse number 9, and said, What hast thou done to us? And then Abraham began to explain. And so Abimelech, Abimelech actually restored Sarah to Abraham, gave instruction that no one was to touch Sarah and Abraham. And the Bible said, Abraham prayed unto God in verse 17. And, Ab and what had happened, God had shut up the womb of uh, Abimelech's wife and his maidservants. And then, anyway, Abraham prayed for them there in verse number 17 and 18. You say, how in the world do you get a chapter like that? Well, I just said that even when we're not trusting him, God is in control. Do you see how God protected Abraham and Sarah? Even when Abraham was not trusting. Sometimes when you're afraid, people tend to make decisions based upon the present circumstances. And I found through the scripture that God can use that for our good and his glory. Why? Because Abimelech, Abimelech learned to fear God. If you'll notice in um, chapter number 20 and verse number 11, the Bible said, And Abraham said, Because I thought surely the fear of God is not in this place, and they will slay me for my wife's sake. Abimelech learned some lessons. He learned to fear God that day in Gerar. So even things that we wrongly do, God can still be in control and is in control. And God uses that for our good and his glory. I'm thinking, and I'm not going to turn there, but I'm thinking of Ruth and Esther, the books of Ruth and Esther. The Bible tells us that Ruth's husband, Elimelech, and her and her two sons, Malon and Kelon, went down to Moab. And while they were in Moab, some bad things happened. Elimelech died. The two sons died, Malon and Kelon. The only ones that were left was Ruth and her two daughters-in-law, Orpha and Ruth. Orpha kissed Ruth, but, I mean, and the Bible said that Orpha kissed Ruth, but Ruth clave. And as a result, Ruth went back to Bethlehem with Naomi. And it was not her intention to seek out a near kinsman. But the Bible says in the book of Ruth that her hap, Ruth had went out and was going to make a living for her and Naomi. And the Bible said her hap, H-A-P, her hap was to land or to light on the field that belongeth to Boaz. Come to find out, Boaz was the near kinsman. And as we read the rest of the story, we find that Ruth was in the lineage of the Lord Jesus Christ. Ruth, a Moabitess. And God had already called Moab his wash pot. That means his garbage can. So even when we're not aware that God is in control and God is leading, you see what came out of it. If Ruth had not went back to Bethlehem, and if she had not went to the right field, then Christ would have never been born in Bethlehem. You say, oh, he could have found somebody else. Well, the Bible says it was Ruth. The Bible says it was Ruth. So we see providentially the hand of God working even when we're not aware of him working in our lives. A lot of you sitting here this evening can say, well, I'm looking back in my life and I can see how God brought me here. Brought me here to this place to hear the truth of the Word of God, trust Christ as my Savior, or maybe been in some kind of trouble, but God brought you to this place in your life. Use it. Use it for the glory of God. You might not see the good in it now, but you will. Just trust God. Amen. Trust God. Yes, sir. 
Yes, sir. All things does work together. Amen. All things works together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. I hope I quoted that right because Miss King's looking at me. Amen. She, <laughs> I hope I got that right. Amen. But that's what it says. All right. If not, if I missed a word in there, I'll, I'll, I'll fix it. All right. And then we see Ruth, but then we see Esther. You remember Esther went to the throne for such a time as this. Such a time as what? Mordecai had convinced Ahasuerus to give a decree to kill all the Jews. And at a certain day, they were going to... Yes, sir. Oh, thank you very much. Mordecai was the uncle. All right, I got it straight now. Haman had convinced Ahasuerus to kill the Jews. Mordecai of course, was the one that God used to get that thing, not reversed, but a new law to be made. And Esther. Esther went to the, went to the, um, the, 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 the maid's chamber. She got ready for a beauty contest. That was humiliating. That, that was a humiliating story. To get a bunch of women to, to go and and uh, do a fashion show for the king. Basically what it was. And if the king was not pleased with those women, then she would have been put in the, with the rest of the maids and she would have not known a man the rest of her life. She would have been there as, as a concubine. So at first I got real mad at Mordecai for doing that to his niece. But then I read the rest of the story and Esther was on the throne to save the Jews from the death penalty that hung over them. God used Esther and then used Mordecai to get that. And, and by the way, a law made by the media Persians and was sealed by the king's ring could never, ever be reversed. There's a lesson in that, you know. There's a lesson that the Bible says we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. And the Bible says that the wages of sin is death. Did you know there was a death penalty hanging over the human race? The death penalty. Did you know that if it wasn't for the Lord Jesus Christ dying on Calvary and all of your dirty, rotten sins placed on Christ and God judging Christ for your sins, did you know that you'd still be under that death penalty? Now, you can escape that second death. How can you escape that second death? By believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. So what happened is that the king gave Mordecai's ring and said, write a law as it pleases you and send it out. So at that particular time, the, it went out and then the Jews um, got ready, armed themselves in that particular day. Then they got the victory. God was glorified. But now, in the book of Esther, the reason I told you that story, in the book of Esther, God's not mentioned. The, the Lord's name is not mentioned in the book of Esther. You read the whole book of Esther in the Bible. But for such a time as this, providentially, God raised up Esther and put her on the throne. Put her there with Ahasuerus. What a wonderful God we serve. Even when we don't trust Him, He's still in control. No one ever cared for you like the Lord Jesus Christ. He that keepeth Israel never slumbers nor sleeps. He's wide awake. He's on the job. He knows your circumstances. He knows what you're going through. And He is there to help you. Amen. We cast all of our cares on Him because He cares for us. Now, let me take you somewhere else. God is in control even when there is ill will shown by others. Even when people are against you, and it seems like the whole world is crashing in around you, God is still in control. I thought about this last night when I was watching our president. Everybody's against him. You know, I'm for, I am for President Trump. I'm for the Lord, number one. But if Hollywood hates him, you got to love him. 
I mean, if, if the liberal crowd and, 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 and all of them the, the, that, that are trying to push this, these, these liberal issues and ideas, if they're against him, we got to be for him. And by the way, let me just go ahead and say this. God's not listening to the liberal ideas or the, or the rules and regulations the liberal judge are handing down. Doesn't affect God a bit. God's word is still his word. It'll never change. Amen. All right, now, uh, God's in control even when ill will is shown by others. If you will, go to Genesis chapter 37. Genesis chapter 37. My God's in control. I lift up my eyes to the hills from which cometh my help. My help's in the Lord. In Genesis chapter number 37, we see what Joseph's brothers did to Joseph. Genesis 37. Um, Israel, verse 3, who was Jacob, loved Joseph more than any of his children, all the children, all of his children, because he was a son of his old age. And that's what they, some of my kids accuse me of loving my Matthew more than I love them. My girls do anyway. You know, we had our first kid in the 70s and Matthew wasn't born until 94. 1994. I used to candidate churches back years ago, a few years ago. And I'd introduce my three girls and I'd say, um, these are by my first wife. And then <laughs> my two boys, and then I'd get, a, you know, I'd get all that. I'm candidating the church, you know, they want to hear all about me. And by the way, when you're candidating a church, they take, if they'll, they'll, before you get through preaching, they'll have your age and the age of your kids and how old you was and how long you was married before you had your first one. Congregations can do that, you know. So, they, they are. And so, anyway, then after I said, these are by my first wife, I'd introduce my boys and they'd say, these are by my first wife too. God's just got a sense of humor. But anyway, I, I don't know why I put that in there. I guess to give my little, my Matthew a plug, I don't know. He's, um, anyway, um, they loved, he loved his younger one more than he loved his, because he was the son of his old age. But the Bible said in verse number four that his brothers hated him. Hated him. Now, we can try to color that word all we want, flower it up a little bit. But if you'll look up the, the, the word and the meaning of that word, they hated him as an enemy or a foe. They hated him. I hate your guts. You know, one of those kind of kids. And then verse 5, he dreamed a dream, and after he told them the dream, they even hated him more. He said, your sheaves stood around about and made obeisance to my sheep. Who do you think you are? Who, who do you think you are? And then he had another dream. There in uh, verse 9, he had another one. He dreamed yet another dream and told his brother and said, Behold, I've dreamed a dream more. And behold, the sun, the moon, the eleven stars made obeisance to me. Well, even his dad got a little mad at him there in verse number 10 and rebuked him. Well, verse 18, let's go on down. I said we weren't going to read the whole chapter. Verse 18, when they saw him far off, even before he came near unto them, they conspired against him to slay him. He had come to check on them because Jacob had sent him to check on his brethren. And they said, verse 19, uh, Behold, this dreamer cometh. Come now, therefore, in verse 20, and let us slay him. Did they hate him or did they hate him? They were ready to kill him. They wanted to kill him. Well, Reuben, Reuben came to his rescue there in verse number 21. Well, they took him, cast him into a pit. And they said in verse 27, Come, let us sell him to the Ishmaelites and let not our hand be upon him. For he is our brother and our flesh. And his brethren were content. I've got that underlined in my Bible. You know that contentment doesn't make it right? You ever thought about that? Contentment doesn't make it right. Even in our Christian realm, we have people that are searching for the will of God in their lives. And they say, well, I've got peace about it. Just because you got peace about it, don't make it right. You better put some scripture with it. 
Amen. You better, you know, this, we go on our feelings, we're going to get in trouble. You know, we, we, you better be careful. Contentment doesn't make it right. And the Bible said that they were content. Well, Joseph went to prison, chapter number 39, verse number 20. Joseph's master took him and put him into prison, a place where the king's prisoners were. He had already been sold into slavery, and Potiphar's wife had did some crazy things, and um, Potiphar had him thrown in prison, and, and he was bound, and he was there in the prison, verse number 20. Because, again, because of Potiphar's lying wife. Now, remember why we said that God was, God was always in control, that no one ever cared for me like Jesus, even when you're not trusting him. And number two, even when there's bad things happen or ill will that is shown by others, God is still in control. We know this by the scripture that God's in control. All right. The butler and the baker had a dream there in chapter number 40 who were in prison. And they went to Joseph and Joseph interpreted the dream in verse number 9 of chapter 40 and also verse number 16, the baker in chapter number 40. Well, it happened just like Joseph said. Pharaoh restored the butler and hanged the baker. But if you'll notice in chapter 40 and verse 23, and by the way, Joseph had asked the butler to remember him when Pharaoh set him free and restored him. And the Bible said in verse 23 of chapter 40, yet did not the chief butler remember Joseph, but for guide him, but for guide him. Um, there's a lesson there we could learn. Some people only see what others do don't do. You're not one of those kind of people. I hope you're not. Always looking at what others do not do. They never consider through the years of what a person has done. There's people that get mad at people. And if you will, if you will weigh your friendship or your life with that individual... Is that his character? Is that her character? In times past, what have they done to try to help you? How have they tried to restore you? How have they tried to ease your burdens? Then all of a sudden, one thing happens and they forget about what people don't do for them. You, you see what I'm saying? So, I'm using that for... Is a, good, is a good lesson for us. A lot of people say, well, only if I had made different choices or I married another person or I went a, went a different place, things would have been different. My dear friend, why don't you come to reality that you're where you're at? God's brought you here for a reason. Yes. Amen. In, in, enjoy the goodness of God. Learn what you can while you're here. Learn, learn, learn things from the scripture that'll help you. And go on and serve God. Amen. And start praising Him for what is happening to you rather than what's not happening to you. Amen? So God's still in control. He's, he's, he's always been in control. He's always, always, always has. He always will be. And then you get in chapter 45 of Genesis. Um... Well, let me, let me go back to chapter 41 and verse 40. Chapter 41, verse 40. Joseph was, you know what happened? He had interpreted Pharaoh's dream. Pharaoh said in verse 40 of chapter 41, Thou shalt be over my house, and according unto thy word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than thou. He was elevated to prime minister, as it were. He was number two man in the whole country of Egypt. Came out of a pit, being sold to the Ishmaelites. Ishmael sold him and brought him down to Egypt. He was a slave in Potiphar's house. and He went to prison. Now he's number two man in the whole nation. 
Go to chapter 45. Chapter 45, verse number 5. Let's, let's read in verse number 5. Verse number 5 of chapter 45. Now therefore be not grieved. Now remember the brothers had came down. There was a famine. They came down. All of the rest of the eleven um, said, Be not grieved nor angry with yourselves that you sold me hither, for God did send me before you to preserve life. For these two years hath the famine been in the land, and yet there are five years in which there shall neither be earring nor harvest. And God sent me before you to preserve you a posterity in the earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. So now it was not you that sent me hither. And I'll tell you what's the truth. The, the more you read this, the, the more you read this, the better it is. The, the better it is. It was not you that sent me hither. But God, he hath made me a father to Pharaoh and Lord of all of his house and a ruler throughout all the land of Egypt. Go to Genesis chapter 50. Verse 20 and 21. Well, look at verse 19. His brethren again. Joseph said unto them in verse 19, Fear not, for I am in the place of God. But as for you, ye thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good. To bring to pass as it is this day to save much people alive. Now therefore fear ye not, I will nourish you and your little ones. And he comforted them and spake kindly unto them. Did you know the Lord Jesus Christ will always feed us, always nourish us, always help us? Even through ill will shown by your own family or others around you. God is still in control. He always provides deliverance. Amen. There's um, we may we may continue this thought next Wednesday. I know I was in Matthew 24, but I I just I just put it in put that in park and came here. But even when other people's um, uh, speaks against you or has false counsel against you I've got you can go to 2nd Samuel 16 and you can find Hushai and Ahithophel and David and Absalom you can find out what happened we'll go on a little bit more with that but again back to the 121st Psalm in closing I will lift up mine eyes into the hills from whence cometh my help my help cometh from the Lord which made heaven and earth he will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth, even forevermore. God is in control. No, <laughs> no one ever cared for me like Jesus. No one ever cared for me. No one ever cared for you like Jesus. Let's stand to our feet, please. We'll be dismissed. Amen. Thanking God for all of His goodness and mercy as we're dismissed. Um, be back Sunday morning, bring some visitors with you. For you visitors that came, you